This is a Cummins 12 valve out of a second generation Dodge three quarter ton. And it was really low on power and had a tendency of stalling when I would let go of the throttle. So a few months back I had a video, I think I called it Dodge Cummins Low Power Mystery. And in the comments section I had YouTuber Alan, he helped me out with some info. With his help I was able to track down these parts here. And this snubber, it's currently located right here. And uh, basically it's a fitting with a kind of like a, about a pinhole size opening to allow pressure to get to the gauge. And if it didn't have that restriction, then the, the needle on the gauge would likely be so erratic that you couldn't, you couldn't properly get a reading, like you would just be bouncing around so bad. So I wanna see if I can get a, a reading off of the uh, lift pump today, if I can get this thing started. So I'm gonna see if I can uh, fire it on one battery. So the old 12 valves, they sometimes had a problem with the spring pressure in the bypass becoming weak or maybe even broken and I suspect that might be the problem with this one and so if I get this thing fired and it makes low pressure here on the gauge I would like to actually do a test here if I would pinch off the return line and I, if I would see that the pressure would increase nicely on the gauge by restricting the the bypass well that would be a pretty good indication that it is in fact the uh, bypass here. I think I'll also put the battery charger booster on it as well. So I'm just going to hook up the starter. So under here I should find that. <clears throat> okay, got that on there. And I want to get the exhaust pipe hooked up here yet. Jug of fuel. So these fuel lines here, one is one feeds the lift pump and the other one is the return. And so I'm gonna loosen off this banjo bolt. And see if, oh, there's already fuel coming out of here. So I already did some priming on the lift pump here, like that, and I loosened off the banjo bolt here, and some fuel came out. Well, I, I'm hoping that that's actually the problem for the uh, low power is this unit right here and uh, that spring can break or get fatigued and become uh, weak and, and uh, not let the uh, lift pump build up pressure instead it just releases it too soon and it goes back to the uh, fuel tank so anyways maybe I'll uh, crank this thing a little bit now and see what happens so I haven't got it to fire yet and I've got a tarp strap hooked up to the right spot now before I didn't and now it's uh, opening my fuel and leave that throttle alone unlike last time keep that closed uh, okay and I did bleed it a little bit more I'm gonna try it crank it some more and I'll see what happens I had an oil leak here and I was trying to figure out where is that oil leak coming from and then I remembered 
Oh yeah, I had <laughs> I had uh, removed that timing pin from behind here, so that's my oil leak right there. And I had a fuel leak here as well, and so this was actually just a temporary install just to do the test, and so I think it's this one eighth pipe thread here that's leaking because I, I assembled it without sealer, and I also don't have the sealing washers in here either, but I think it's coming up from here on top. So just temporary, but got some testing done here anyways. So if I remember right, this lift pump, it should make about 17, 18 pounds pressure at idle and uh, a little higher as the RPM increases. However, it was actually only making about two or three pounds. And so now it kind of makes sense why this engine had barely enough power to maintain highway speed. So the engine, it doesn't have the heavy flywheel like from a standard transmission. And this is actually for an automatic and it doesn't have the torque converter bolted to it so there's really not much weight back here and I kind of suspected that it would run fairly rough without the uh, weight in the back but actually it ran fairly smooth I thought. So even though the fuel pressure was low the uh, snubber here did a really nice job at keeping the fuel pressure steady for the gauge so at least that part was a success and I think that this is the uh, next step if I want this engine to have a decent fuel pressure is to re replace the uh, overflow valve with this adjustable one from Torque Tech. So anyways guys, thanks for uh, checking in.